Next up in the news, at a press conference held at the State House on Wednesday, the Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt refuted opposition leader Lennox Linton's claims recently made on CBS's 60 Minutes about Dominica's CBI program, as well as denouncing Linton's actions as unpatriotic. The Prime Minister claimed that certain islands were targeted in the segment, including Dominica, because of the country's refusals to embrace Henley & Partners, a company that specializes in citizenship and residence planning. Chris Callen, who, uh, come, who works for Henley & Partners and played an instrumental role in establishing multiple CBI programs, according to 60 Minutes, was also one of the featured interviews in that episode. The campaign itself and some of its main actors will not buy and in themselves a major surprise. We have in the past experienced attack after attack from members of the United Workers' Party, who we believe work for or have common interests with persons like Chris Killing of Henley and Partners. It was former Prime Minister Denzel Douglas of St. Kitts and Levis who told us that Edison James approached him as a salesman on behalf of Henley and Partners when Mr. James lost office in 2000. It is not in dispute that Lennox Linton traveled with him several times. Chris Kalin of Henley and Partners has never been disposed to Dominica ever since the election of the Dominican Labour Party administration in 2000 and our subsequent refusal to hire them as the exclusive agent for our citizenship by investment program. What we cannot comprehend is how a sitting member of the Parliament of Dominica, in the person of Mr. Lennox Linton, the leader of the opposition, would be so irresponsibly a part of what of that campaign. Perhaps it is his emotional ties to Henley and partners, or it may be his great anger and fear provoked by the considerable success of the CBI program. Skerritt stressed the importance of the CBI program for Dominica's economy, but said that this did not concern Linton, who saw the success of the program as a political threat and an obstacle for his pathological obsession for power. Skerritt also denied claims that the CBI program was not transparent. We have explained ad nauseum how the CBI program works, and Linton is more than aware of that. Let me once again stress that the CBI program is governed by legislation and persons seeking citizenship of Dominica under the CBI have to undergo a most rigorous yet transparent due diligence exercise that involves criminal character and, and, and ethics checks by international law enforcement agencies and authorities and due diligence companies. While it is no longer mandatory for face-to-face -face interviews to be done, it may be required if deemed necessary. Once due diligence reports are received, a committee of government officials review all of the documentation before granting, recommending the granting of citizenship. It is there, if there is any doubt or concern, further questions or vetting will take place. In no instance, and I repeat, in no instance is citizenship granted to anyone if the due diligence checks do not pass muster. Ladies and gentlemen, quite simply, Lennox Linton, with the whole world watching, had a choice to make. He could have come down on the side of Dominica, or he could have sided with those who wish to see the demise of the Dominica CBI program for their own selfish reasons. Which side did he choose? Certainly not Dominica's. The Prime Minister also defended the issuance of diplomatic passports, categorically denying their sale to unsavory characters or otherwise, and promising that there is a thorough due diligence process. He stated that outstanding non-Dominicans had offered their services over the years as ambassadors and trade investment commissioners, allowing Dominica access to parts of the world where it was unable to be represented by nationals. 
He conceded that some of those people who found themselves at odds with the law, but also stated that this was never known to him or his government before the individuals were considered as diplomats and that no diplomatic passports had ever been sold by the government. He addressed each of the individuals whose names arose in the 60 Minutes episode, including Bahamian convict Rudolf King. Skerritt categorically denied that King was ever appointed as ambassador to Bahrain, in contrast to what was said by the 60 Minutes host, Steve Croft. It was said that Bahamian Rudolf King had been issued a diplomatic passport and appointed ambassador to Bahrain. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a lie. Rudolf King never applied for or was ever granted a passport of any sort, whether service, official or diplomatic, by the government of Dominica. Rudolf King was never appointed ambassador to Bahrain or even ambassador to Bafe State. <laughs> the government of Dominica has refuted this allegation by Linton on several occasions over the past 12 years. Yet, he persists in repeating it this time on international television. I call on Lennox Linton one more time to put up or shut up. To Lennox Linton I say, provide evidence of Rudolf King having been issued a Dominica passport or having been appointed ambassador to Bahrain. If you cannot do this, then do the decent thing and apologize to the people of Dominica. The issues of Nigerian former Minister of Oil, Alison Maduki, and Italian businessman, Francisco Carallo, were also addressed, Skerritt claiming that both of these people were adequately researched and dropped once they became embroiled with the law. According to Skerritt, Dominica is now black-eyed in the eyes of the world due to Linton's comments, and time and money will have to be spent to repair Dominica's image.